Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to recolor a house using GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.10.18 which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. But of course before I get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here as well as my GIMP book of layers and GIMP and Inkscape help articles so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com. And you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. Your premium membership includes access to my GIMP Help Center app, ebooks like my GIMP Book of Layers, and exclusive content not found on YouTube. You can start your premium membership off with a 7 day free trial and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here's the photo I'll be using for today's tutorial. This is a free photo from Pexels. Just click the free download button here. You can go with any size you want. Here is the final result. I experimented with a few colors here. So for example, for this left side here, I did a red and a yellow. So this is just one of many variations you can create here. But as you can see, this effect allows you to recolor a house, which makes it look like you are repainting a house. And that can be useful whenever you are maybe testing out new colors to paint your house with. Or if you are a real estate person and you need to show a client what somebody's house would look like if they were able to paint it to whatever color they wanted. This was actually requested from me from one of my subscribers. So thank you for the request. Let's dive in here. And I'll start by opening up the original image. So I'll go to File, Open Recent in my case, and I'll click on this image. This is asking me to convert this from the color profile that the image is currently set to, to GIMP's native color profile. So I'll just hit Convert. So here's the original photo. It's sort of crooked and I don't like the cropping on this. So what I did was I started by coming over here. This will be your color picker tool by default. So I'll choose the measure tool in this tool group. Tool groups, for those of you who don't know, were introduced in GIMP 2.10.18. But I'll hold control and zoom in using my mouse wheel. And what I'll do with this measure tool is I'm just going to draw across any straight line in the photo. In this case, it's gonna be the roof. And I wanna get this as close as I can, something like that. Once I have that pretty straightened out, I'll come over here and click the straighten button in my tool options. So I have my tool options moved over here. I'll hold control and zoom out. So this is slightly better. It's still not perfect. And actually if I hit shift R, that'll grab the rotate tool. I can rotate this back up slightly. Maybe about right there, hit rotate. Next, I'll grab my crop tool and I'm just going to click and drag this crop tool. Right now I have this without a fixed aspect ratio, but if I turn that on, this as I drag my crop tool, will set this to a 16 by nine aspect ratio. That's totally optional. I'm just gonna drag this up. I'm going to make sure I don't have any of the alpha channel, that gray checkerboard background in the final crop here. So I'll click once inside, and now we have a cropped photo. Again, not perfect, but a lot better than it was before. So now let's move on to the areas of the house that we want to paint. So I'm going to do this using the paths tool, and this is going to be the best tool for the job here. So I'll grab the paths tool inside of my toolbox. And I'll hold control and zoom in. So I'll start with the first section here. What I did originally was I broke this up by each section that I wanna paint. So in this case, we'll have three sections. You might have more sections depending on the house you're using. So what I'll do, I'll hold control and zoom in slightly more, is I'll start by creating my first node here inside the area I wanna paint. In this case, I'm not going to paint any of the trim around the house. I'm just going to paint everything inside the trim pretty much. So now I'll click to create another node. And I'm just going to continue to do this around the house inside the trim. I can hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel. I will include these shadow areas. Those will come through when we recolor everything. And right now I'm just loosely painting this or loosely drawing it, I should say. You guys can be as precise as you would like. And as per usual, the more time you spend on this, the better it will turn out. But everything that I don't want painted, I'm not going to select. If I hit control Z, I can undo drawing a node and I can click and drag. That will give me a curve here. And then I can click to create the next node and to uncurve this node between these two nodes, I can just click on the previous node, straighten that out here with the handle, and then click on my last node there and I can continue drawing from that node. Hold control and zoom out. So same thing here, click and drag, click. That curve isn't too bad, so I'll just leave it there. 
And I'll use the space bar and move my mouse around to move around on my image. And I'm just going around any object that doesn't need to be painted. And the trim stops about right here, so this won't be exact. I can actually inch this a little bit over. Hold control, zoom out. And I'm including the light fixtures here, but we will go through there and mask those out later. But I'll hold control and click to create a union between this node and the very first node. So now we have an enclosed area. Obviously, we still need to do the door as well, so I'll hold control and zoom in. To create a discontinued path that's going to have the same properties as this previous path I just drew, I'll hold the shift key and then click and create a node. That creates a disconnected node there, but these two paths will have the same characteristics to them. So hold control and zoom in. And now I can continue from there and hold control, zoom out with my mouse wheel. Click and drag to create a curve there. And hold control, zoom out. Click right here. This line will be curved, so I'll have to come back up here, click on this node, bring this in, come back to this node, and continue. Hold control, create a union there. And now I'll move on to the lower part. And by the way, I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to mastering the path tool, so definitely check that out if you think this tutorial is too fast in terms of using the path tool. So now I'll just create some nodes to enclose this area, which I do want to paint. Hold control, create a union. And I'll do this part. All right, so our first area is selected. Now what I need to do over here in the tool options, we have an area that gives us some options here with the path we just drew. So in this case, I'll do selection from path. That'll create a selection area here. And now that I have this area selected, I'm going to come over here to my layers panel, create a layer group, and I'll rename this garage left side, hit the enter key. So we're gonna put all the elements that pertain to the garage area here inside of a single layer group. So I'll start by duplicating our original layer, click and drag that inside the layer group. And while we're still inside the layer group, I'll create a new layer and I'll rename this color, fill it with transparency and click OK. Next, what I'll do is hit Shift B on my keyboard. That will grab my bucket fill tool. And if I come over here, I can change the color that I'm using. So let's go with a pretty stark contrast here. So this will be a green color and I'll click OK. Before I fill this in, I'm going to come over here to my layer group I created, right click and go to Add Layer Mask. And under Initialize Layer Mask 2, I'll choose Selection and click Add. So that will mask everything out except for the selection area I created. And now when I hit Control Shift A to deselect that, and with my bucket fill tool selected, I'll come over here to the color layer. And when I fill in that color layer, now only the area inside the garage that we want painted will be filled in. Of course, those colors do not look realistic. You can obviously tell we just fill this in with a new color. So to make this more realistic, we'll need to blend the layer here, and we can do that using a layer mode. So with the color layer selected, I'll come up top here to mode, and the mode that you use will ultimately depend on how you want this to look. But just to give you guys a head start, you can go with multiply, which I really like. In this case, it's going to darken it a little bit. Or you can go with something like overlay. And if I scroll down one, there's also soft light. And then coming down lower, HSL color is another good one. And finally, LCH color. So ultimately, the blend mode you use for your layer is going to depend on a few factors. So for one, the color that you're using to recolor this house. In this case, it's gonna be a very bright green. Number two, the actual color of the original paint on the house. And number three, how you want the original paint color and the new color to mesh inside the photo. And remembering that this is a digital photo, so how this looks is going to be different than obviously once you actually paint the house. But for this particular color, the LCH layer mode looks pretty decent or the multiply layer mode. I'm gonna stick with LCH for now and hold control and zoom out. Of course, we still have two more areas left, so I'll show you guys how to work on those areas. So I'll come back over here to the Paths tool, hold Control and zoom in. So we're gonna once again outline the area that needs to be painted. So I'm going to zoom in and click to create a new node. 
and I'll just go around this sign. Hold control and zoom out. I'm going to speed through this. and I'll hold control and create a union between the last node there and the first one. So I'll hold control and zoom out. The nodes I created here were not perfect. I can always come back, hold control, zoom in, and rearrange the nodes here so I can reposition these if I don't like the way they are positioned, but I'm not gonna spend too much time on this portion. So I'll hold control and zoom out. We still need to deselect this area, so what I'll do is I'll hold control, zoom in, hold the shift key, and just click like so. Hold control and click on this last node there. Hold control and zoom out. So now we have our area selected. Once again, I'll come over to the tool options and hit selection from path. There you can see only the area inside our path has been selected. This will be the area that we're gonna recolor. So now I'll come back over to my layers panel and I'm just going to click to create a new layer group and click and drag this outside of that other layer group we created. And now I'm going to name this main house left because it's the main portion of the house on the left side. Hit the enter key. Come back over here and I'm going to duplicate this. Click and drag this inside the layer group. So our original layer is now inside of this layer group. I need to add the layer mask to this. So I'll click on this and right click. Go to add layer mask. Under initialize layer mask 2, I'll choose selection and click add. If we're gonna use the same color, what I can do instead of creating a new color layer is I can come down here to this existing one, duplicate this, and then click and drag it into the new layer group. And that will give this the same color and the same layer mode here, the same blend mode. So I'll hit Control Shift A to deselect this selection area. And if I click off of the Paths tool, hold Control, zoom out. There we have the second portion of our house. Now let's move on to the third and final portion of the house that we want to recolor. The process for this is going to be exactly the same as the other two. So hold control, zoom in, hit B as a shortcut key for my Bezier curves or my path tool there. So B is a shortcut key for that. Hold control and zoom in. So I'm going to start by doing this little portion here. So I'll just click to create this path and I will speed through this portion again. So there's the first area. I'll shift click to create the second area here. Hold control and create a union. So hold control and zoom out. I need to deselect this area and I also need to select these areas. So I'll come up here and I can quickly draw around this shape. This is a pretty basic shape, so it should be pretty easy. Hold control, create a union. And I'll hold control, zoom out with my mouse wheel. So next I need to select this area. So I'll hold the shift key, click to create a node. And now I'm just going to select this area. Hold control and create a union. So I'll hold control and zoom out. Now we have this whole area selected here. I'll come over and click the selection from path option in my tool options. So now all of this area is selected. And once again, I'm going to create a new layer group, move this outside the existing layer group, double click on this to rename this main house right. And I will duplicate the original image layer here click and drag this into the layer group. And once again, I will duplicate the color layer here and click and drag this into our layer group. And of course, I still need to add the layer mask, so I'll come over here to the layer group, right click, go to add layer mask, make sure we go with selection there and click add. Control Shift A to deselect that, and I'll grab a new tool to get rid of the path lines there. And now all three sections of our house have been recolored. 
Of course, now the main issue is that some of the objects that were obstructing the areas that we painted are now covered with this green, and that's going to detract from some of the realism here. So what I'll do is I'll paint on my layer masks on anything that needs to have the new color removed. So hold control, zoom in. I'll start over here with these light fixtures. So I'll come back to the garage left side layer mask. So I'm clicked on the layer mask itself. Grab my paintbrush tool. I can reset my colors here to black and white. I'll paint black anywhere where I don't want this object to be painted. So I'll hold control, zoom in. And you can set your brush size to a pretty small size if you're painting on details such as this one here. And I also have this set to a very soft brush here. And I will quickly paint over this little fixture. As per usual, the more time you spend on this, the better it will look ultimately. But there's the light fixture. I'll use the space bar to move over, hold control, zoom in with my mouse wheel. And now I'll paint out this portion. Hold control and zoom out. So now our light fixtures are coming through. I'll use the space bar to move over. This area doesn't have anything obstructing, but this area does. So what I'll do is I'll click on the main house right layer mask, hold control and zoom in. So for one right here, you can see this part of the plant is being obstructed by that green color. So I'll paint with that black color and get rid of that. And there's also a lot of the tree that's being overlapped here, as you can see up here as well. So I will hold control and zoom in and we'll just paint out any of these areas we don't want to be green. All right, so I finished painting the house and I've also removed the details that I didn't want this new color to be painted over. Next, I'll show you how to change the color so that you can sort of experiment with various colors of your house. So for example, I'll start on this color copy layer here for the main house right portion and I'll go to colors, hue saturation. And for one, I can adjust the hue, which is going to change the actual color. So for example, we can go anywhere from this purplish color over to more of like some bluish colors, or I can even go with something like orange. And I can also play around with the lightness or the saturation. So you can see this is also going to alter the way the color looks. And the saturation will turn up the intensity or it'll turn down the intensity. So those are some options with playing around with the color. Let's say I wanna go with this orange color, I'll click OK. And if I wanted to copy these exact settings, I can click on another color layer and then hit Control F. That's the shortcut key to repeat the last filter that I used with the same settings. And of course I can do it with this third one here, Control F. And now all three sections have this orange color. So feel free to play around with different colors and layer modes to get the result you want. All right, that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, you could subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.